great. So yeah, thank you so much for publishing this funny little book. Um, I'd just written a poetry book, which was about processing violence and trauma. And I sort of thought to myself, well, what could be next? And I just wanted to do something else. And the result was this strange little curiosity, which is a mashup of French films and Welsh medieval erotic poetry. Um, and I think what they have in common is this idea of just refusing shame and finding joy in the body, which were things that I found very healing and discovering Guadalajara again. I'd read it many years ago when I was in my 20s and I was impressed at the time, but I think um, coming back to her now was a really good thing for me. Um, we don't know that much about Guerville. Um, what we know of her is really from her poetry. And often she would have these kind of uh, verbal jousting matches with other Welsh language male poets at the time. And um, she became sort of like the Cardi B of medieval times. <laughs> Um, the first poem that I'm going to read is a poem that she wrote actually in response to uh, another poem um, by a Welsh language male poet, which was called Ode to the Penis. And she wrote this poem in response to that. And of course, it's called Ode to the Cunt. Every dumb as fuck, wasted poet, all of the mansplainers, They'll spare me and my sisters if they know what's good for them. Everyone writes empty tweets for the girls on Wine Street, long threads, though they take the best for granted, FFS. They praise a girl's hair, stitch her dress with love, her body and all around. They praise the brows of her eyes or the lovely shape of her, how smooth her breasts are. Her arms in bright sleeves are beautiful, not to mention her hands. Still, a poet is spelling his song to the night, thanking fuck for creating this woman. No praise, though, for between the legs, the space inside where sperm meets egg, or the warm cunt, a circle broken, incandescent, when I loved, hot as fuck, the cunt under my skirt. Fierce cunt, deeper cave, strong and exact as a walled garden, red as kite feathers. Beautiful cunt, opening like a valley, mouth of two broad lips to suck a spoon, a finger, or whatever length she so desires. Cunt swelling between cheeks behind, I sing you red twin. But some men, virtue signaling, these nice guys, if they have the chance, never fail the fuckers to have a feel, take the space as their own. So fuck all the witless men, empathy poets, and sing a song to the Kent for riches, no doubt. Queen of odes, silken, written along two seams, the flag of a sweet fleek Kent flutters a greeting, sharp thicket soaked with love, a forest proud with fucking, perfect as it is, tender border, fur for a fuckable ball sack, girls dance grove, deluxe booty call, or gorgeous bush. Thank fuck for it. So that's always so fun to read. <laughs> just She just goes there. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I think something that came up from translating these poems for me, some of the poems are sort of like homages to Guerfell or perhaps kind of trying to write poems that captured her spirit. And, I, and one of the things that came up was this sense in which the way that we are conditioned to talk about sex and sexuality is actually a means of controlling us. And, you know, in the context of, of women and what women are taught, the kind of education that we have about sex and sexuality, but not just women, you know, all kinds of, of people who, um, who are not the, the kind of heteronormative um, norm, you know, who don't fit that. But I think that often there's a lot of shame that is associated with sexuality. And that's something that I, I think really needs to be challenged and, um, and changed. 
Um, and so I think when Guerrero goes there and she says these things, it's wonderful for us now because she's shameless. And I think sometimes that's what we'd like to be, but it's quite hard given like the way things are for us to, to find that. And so the title poem, Obad after a French movie, um, I was really thinking about um, films, like filmic representations of sexuality, and particularly French films, um, which I've always been particularly interested in. So I'll read that next. Obad after a French movie. That night, if you'd wanted, she would have let you fuck her. You knocked into each other quite unexpectedly and something cracked open, set free after that. Dear troublemaker, she writes, if you were here with me, I'd run my lips over each part of you, kiss every inch. Remember the French film, La Fille sur le Pont, where the lovers are separated but go on talking in their heads. If I feel close, it's because I am, but under a black veil. So much that is erotic about lace, so much that is intimate about stone. How clever sculptors are, revealing in marble nudes what we are not allowed to see as we go about our days. A veil can both hide and reveal a woman's sex, might suggest what we usually cover. She woke before anyone else that morning and sat in the garden with the shriek of blue jays. Yesterday was a blue bridge, a river and you walking towards her. And how shy she was when the breeze rushed under the velvet of her skirt across her thighs, desire carried like a sharp intake of breath. Then there was no peace without your body across hers, no peace at all, unless you lay over and under and with her. Being completely honest was both the easiest and hardest thing in the world, and you gave her such feelings. Here it begins with Eros as trouble, but still it draws you. When you wanted to take her to carry her away, she didn't struggle. She stayed quite still with her arms around you as you traveled away into the night. But can she trust herself? She is piecing herself together from snatches of films she's seen. In dreams, she will dance like Emmanuel Berth in Manon de Source, naked in the water, knowing herself, and nothing is wrong. As Bert Manon, she will know what kind of woman she wants to be, a woman about to combust, or she will conjure Amelie herself as Audrey's tattoo when Amelie, Audrey's body, falls to water, splashes in a puddle on the floor. Even the most cynical are touched by it, they just won't admit it. Above her, the moon pulls with heightened sensitivity and longing. You begin entering her dreams when she is near water, swimming or in the bath, wading in lakes or rivers, and she will have no peace unless she undresses before you, unless you undress before her. Too restless to sleep or eat, shivering in your bed, Years ago, she could bring herself right to the point of orgasm just by thinking or imagining, and she would come in her sleep, unusual for women. Is it like that for everyone, she asks you, so much out of the brain. She looks in the mirror at her pretty body, the sweet little breasts. The last time she heard that song, she was naked in your bed, and when it was over, you sweetly fucked her. C'est vraiment dégueulasse. And she loved you in spite of what others might say. Il m'a dit des mots d'amour, des mots de tous les jours. But it's no good saying it over and again when she finds herself running a corridor in La Belle et la Bête, her cloak fogging movements, hands grasping, mistrust flaming the candle wax, so it falls on you painfully. She sees a mistake far too late, but now she is cast out naked on the grass in the morning light. And I'm just gonna read a tiny, tiny poem so that Guadalupe gets the, the last word. And it's uh, just a little angling, because she wrote a lot in the angling form, which I'm, I'm sure you know. And the poem in Welsh is called Gwilchi Pies, um, which I translated as Guadalupe Wetser Petticoat. Vamhais uh, awlachais and ulich, 
am crys am cyrsi sydan grych. Odyd gwyl ddenyl fwyl frych, na hyn sain sylun yn sych. In my camisole wet through, my chemise and my sweet silk panties too, I'll never be dry again unless it is true that good fucks pass by like rain clouds in June. <laughs>